What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 76 of Onshape. We're going to be building our pen assembly, more specifically, continue building on our pen assembly with the cartridge separator right here. Now, since we, this part is actually pretty easy to model, we're going to do a couple of other things to make our job a little bit easier on assembly down the line. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my composite parts. So right now I have composite parts to be the entire pen body. And I think that's going to be a little difficult to work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that. I'm going to find composite part and I'm going to take the top out of there, hit the green check mark. So now my pen body should only be the bottom portion of our pen. So let's rename that to be pen body bottom. Let's do another composite part consisting of the top, the clip, and we can go ahead and just do the hinge pin while we're at it. Hit the green check mark and we're good to go. We're not gonna do the hinge is because when we bring it in as a composite part, we're gonna do a mate uh, on our assemblies later and we just don't want to have that be a problem. So when you're doing sub assemblies or composite parts, they tend to be static pieces. And so this whole bottom pin is a static piece with itself. So is with this top portion. So let's go ahead and rename that. Let's call this pin body top. Okay, I think we're looking good to go. Now we can go ahead and just make those inactive. And we can only, that what that does for us is we can now only work with the part that we wanna work with and that's gonna be the pin body bottom because we're going to start this sketch right here. I don't know about you, but that just makes my workflow a little bit smoother, a little bit easier to work with when things are grouped together. All right, now let's continue on with this sketch. So we're going to draw a circle first. And the diameter of this circle is going to be 0 0.545 inches. Since we got our work plane started, we actually can go ahead and make that pin bottom disappear as well since we're only gonna be working with a cartridge separator right now. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a couple of lines. We do have a notch missing out of our, our separator. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take and draw a line until I get the middle, this vertical line here from the origin point to, to auto define itself to come in. And we're gonna click on that. That means this line is defined by the center line. And that's what we want. These two lines are going to be equal to each other. So we can equal. And then we give it a dimension of 0 0.035. It's still blue. That's because we need to throw in one more dimension. And that's going to be the angle between these two lines is going to be 90 degrees. I told you this part isn't that hard, guys. Now. Let's do a circular command. So I'm gonna click circular pattern. It might be tucked under here underneath linear pattern. Let's do circular pattern. And that's going to be these triangles. We're gonna populate. We have to zoom out a little bit. And we're gonna do that four times. There we go. We got our notches. The only thing we need to do now is throw in our circles, some fancy footwork, and we're done. I'm going to draw two lines. One's going to go out to the right. One's going to go up at an angle. And then I hit click on and select those two lines. Right click and make them construction lines because we're going to use them to construct where our circle is going to go. And we're not too worried about what it does. So the first dimension on that circle is going to be its diameter. And that's going to be 0.13. And then the diameter of how far it was away from the center distance is going to be 0 0.15. Okay. Continuing on, we're going to have to do circular pattern again. We're going to do circular pattern. We're going to do this circle, and we're going to bump it up four times. Hit the green check mark, and there we go. You know, in retrospect, I wonder if, and it definitely could have made it happen, if you drew all of this geometry at the same time, you'd only have to use circular pattern once. That would have been a smart idea. But we're continuing on. Hit the green check mark, 
and we have our sketch we're going to use, and we're going to reference this a couple of times actually. So the first time we do, we're going to extrude this, and we're going to extrude all of it, except for the notches that are missing. And that's going to be a distance of 0 0.3 inches. You're going to see why here in a second, because we're going to shell. And if we took out those holes and then shelled, it wouldn't come out just right. So that thickness is 0 0.035. Hit the green check mark. And then we're going to make that last sketch active again so we can extrude these pieces. And there we go. There you go, folks. We made our ink cartridge separator. Let's go ahead and rename it so. So we got a cartridge separator. And it has a kind of a, uh, a grayish color to it. So let's right click, edit appearance, give it a grayish color, and there you go. We got our piece done. We can go ahead and make sketch 16 inactive. And then back to when we're looking at our composite parts, where would we consider this to be a composite part on when your pen is fully assembled? And I would say this part would belong to the bottom of the assembly. So I'm going to do is I'm going to find composite part and we're going to drag them both down. Where's composite part one at? There we go. We're going to drag them both down and we're going to add the cartridge separator to that assembly. That way, when I want to look at the top or just the bottom, things are looking as what we need and things automatically remove itself. Remember, all these are also static parts, so none of them move, so it's okay that they're composite parts right now. Let me show you what happens if we did things in the wrong order, though. Let's just say, because we got a little bit of time, let's show, it. let's show it. If I did those pieces out of order, and let's say I decided to shell with the holes, It would come out looking like this and that's not the part what we want so depending upon the order in which you do determines your geometry what it looks like so by shelling the part first and then extruding those holes and removing them it made sure that it didn't also shell those holes as well okay all right guys that's going to be it for this video if this has been helpful please like and subscribe throw it in the comment section about what you need next we're going to finish this pin up here in probably a couple of days. But what are we going to do after that? I've got a couple of cool things in store. Uh, one thing that looks really, really cool. Let's see if I can find it real quick. We're tinkering with some electronics. So how can we take a servo and put it into our 3D geometry? And so this servo right here turns appropriately. I think this is wicked cool. This is of my own design. We're going to see what else we can get away with. But you guys are awesome. Stay awesome. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.